nearly 150 miles to the east. An even larger enemy force of 24 Su-30MKI flankers and Mirage Rafaels raced to the aid of the MiG-29s. The F-22s are outnumbered. In the F-22, we routinely train to fighting outnumbered. We realize that if we only have a certain number of operational squadrons of F-22s, we're going to have to do a whole lot with not very much. The F-22s move to engage the enemy force. Their only hope of surviving against these overwhelming numbers will be a secret future weapon, one few today have heard of, capable of astounding destruction. June 20th, 2016. In a hypothetical combat scenario, based on what we now know of future aerial warfare, a flight of F-22 Raptors engages a large formation of 24 Su-30 MKI flankers and Mirage Rafale fighters. Aircraft like the Russian-built Su-30 and French-built Rafale are widely exported and easily obtained by nations looking to build an air force quickly. They are advanced generation four fighters, the most likely opponents for the F-22 in the next decade. The Raptors are heavily outnumbered, but virtually invisible to radar and at a safe distance of 80 miles away. As they sort through incoming data and develop a plan, they are aided by the F-22's sensor fusion, or integrated avionics, a technology that no other fighter possesses. Previous generations of fighters, like the F-15, separated avionics into individual systems, requiring the pilot to interface with several different panels spread throughout the cockpit. But the F-22 integrates all of these systems into one unified interface, all at the pilot's fingertips via three liquid crystal displays in the cockpit. What pilots don't lack for is data. What they need is information. And sensor fusion gives them information instead of just lots of data from different sensors. With this, the pilot spends less time monitoring basic systems and more time making combat decisions. It creates an outstanding situational awareness picture for the pilot. You see the bad guy farther away, he doesn't see you. And then you get the first look, first shot, first kill. And the more of those that you can do before he even knows you're in the area, the war can be over very quickly. Between them, the F-22s only have 12 missiles left. They'll need more firepower to engage the huge enemy formation in front of them. They enlist the help of a pair of nearby B-1Rs. The B-1R, first outlined by Boeing in 2004, is a proposed replacement for the venerable B-1B Lancer, a supersonic strategic bomber in service since 1986. The B-1R has a top speed of Mach 2.2 twice that of other heavy bombers like the B-52. If built, it would be equipped with the same powerful engines the F-22 uses, the Pratt & Whitney F-119. This means the B-1R will have super crews, just like the Raptor. Add advanced radar and a full complement of 20 AIM-120D missiles to the mix, and it is clear how formidable this future weapon could be. Let's say we have a Raptor that's able to detect, localize, and fix an enemy aircraft. Transmit that information back to a command and control circuit or to the bomb truck or the missile truck itself. And then have the missile truck fire the missile against the enemy. The large aircraft, like a B-1, can carry so many missiles that it doesn't really impact when one is fired. And they can also afford to fire two or to ripple missiles if they need to. 
This sort of highly technological teamwork between multiple air assets is another key aspect of how a future air war will be waged. Before the B-1R attack, the stealthy Raptors will engage the enemy formation by firing their remaining radar-guided missiles. Not enough to take out the whole formation, but enough to sow confusion and panic. They hope this will protect the unstealthy B-1Rs from counterattack. The Raptors move in. A complete radar portrait of the enemy force is drawn from sensors all over the F-22. Even the skin of the plane itself is a sensor, called the distributed aperture system. What that is, is on each of the aircraft's skin, along the wings, there's thousands of tiny little receivers, passive receivers, that can take in signals intelligence. Um, these are very good for missile warning. Um, they give you a very good idea of what's coming at you. The F-22s fire their remaining AMRAMs. All that's left in their weapons bays are close-range, heat-seeking missiles. The volley tracks the enemy formation boring in on their mark at over 2,400 miles per hour. At this speed, it takes just seven seconds for the missiles to cover the final five miles to the target. All of a sudden, the bad guy's flight starts falling apart. Everybody's scrambled, try to get away from the missiles. Chaff, flares, whatever it takes. Then, the Americans complete their one-two punch. Like a team of special forces soldiers deep in enemy territory, the F-22s, still undetected, relay targeting coordinates to the B-1Rs via a secure broadband data link. They ripple fire missile after missile from the AMRAM's maximum effective range of 120 miles. It's a 21st century version of the Archer's fuselage in medieval combat missile warning radar in the enemy cockpits once again raises the alarm, but to no avail. The enemy is too disorganized from the Raptor attack to effectively counter. The chaos among the enemy ranks perfectly illustrates the stunning advantage of high technology in a dogfight of the future. Can you imagine what that would do to a command and control cycle when all of a sudden your aircraft are disappearing from missile shots and you have no idea where the, uh, where the targeting is coming from? In just a few moments, it's every man for himself. Radio chatter is intense as the enemy tries to determine who is alive and who is dead. But among the confused and scattered formation, a handful of pilots flying French Rafales managed to survive the storm of AMRAMs from the B-1Rs. Here's how. In order to defeat a missile that's been launched on you, first of all, you've got to know it's coming. So you've got to have a, a good radar warning system that's going to let you know, A, you're locked on, and B, there's been missile launch at you. The AMRAMs fired by the B-1R use Doppler shift in the radar returns to calculate path of travel, speed, and distance to a target. For the Rafales, survival depends on understanding this and knowing how to overload the missile's tracking system. The enemy pilots survived by breaking into the AMRAM, perpendicular to the missile's flight path. Then they released chaff, strips of aluminum that reflect radar energy. You go past 90, 110, 120 degrees and dive for the deck, there is not a missile that is going to be able to track you down. The six remaining Rafale fighters now move against the distant B-1Rs, the only target their radars can find. A volley of missiles roar past Mach 3 in pursuit of the B-1s. This moment in the dogfight demonstrates just how vulnerable an unstealthy Generation 4 aircraft will be in a future air war. The aircraft is damaged, but not knocked out. The B-1 pilots go full throttle with a top speed over Mach 2. They're fast, but not fast enough to outrun a Rafale in full afterburner. 
their hopes rest on the dogfighting prowess of the F-22s, who move in to engage the enemy within visual range. This battle will be decided up close and personal with the F-22s in full sight of the enemy. It is the year 2016. In a hypothetical scenario, two American B-1Rs were just attacked by enemy Rafales. Now it's up to a flight of F-22 Raptors to intercept the Rafales before the B-1s are lost. It's four F-22s versus six Rafales. The Dassault Rafale with a top speed of Mach 2 is a formidable foe. Though it is not stealth, the Rafale possesses a reduced radar cross-section, the details of which remain classified. With no long-range missiles left, the Raptors will be forced to move within visual range. It's a scenario that has been repeatedly declared extinct. Especially when you talk to the defense contractors today, because they are always talking about the importance of sensors and systems and avionics and how we've really gotten beyond the dogfight. And it's always turned out that we do get back into these close-in conflicts where you're going to be eye to eye with the opponent. It's not going to change. I mean, a line of sight can be at 500 miles or can be 100 yards, depending on the circumstances of the engagement. The other guy could just get lucky and get in close, in which case the F-22 Raptors is going to have to show how well it can maneuver. The Raptors assign targets. I'm going to go to the merge, and I'm going to get the job done. Now, like I said, if, if I can't shoot BVR, then I've got to go within visual range to get the job done. In seconds, one of the Raptor pilots spots a glint of metal on the horizon. The Rafale breaks into him. Within visual range, stealth no longer hides the Raptor. They speed towards the merge, roaring past each other at over Mach 1. Just like dogfighters of years past, these 21st century pilots turn into each other to initiate combat. Unlike previous generations, the F-22's onboard computer is actually monitoring how the maneuvering is stressing the aircraft. If I'm asking the jet to do something, the computer decides that it would overstress the airframe, it won't let me do it. In an F-15, the jet will not prevent you from over g the aircraft. Uh, the F-22 will prevent me from overstressing the airframe uh, to, to ensure the long-term uh, health of the airframe. Finally, the F-22 gains lock and fires. The Rafale dives and breaks, releasing flares to draw off the missile. This engagement is over. But three miles away, another Raptor battle is just beginning. He's locked in a vicious circling fight with another Rafale. This F-22 pilot uses an advanced maneuvering technology called thrust vectoring to gain the advantage on his enemy. Thrust vectoring was originally developed in the 1960s for aircraft equipped with VTOL and STOL, or vertical takeoff and landing, and short takeoff and landing. Engineers quickly realized the benefits of the technology for tactical maneuvers. Thrust vectoring is basically taking the exhaust out of the back of the engine and being able to steer it in a certain axis of flight. It's almost like a garden hose effect, if you will. If you turn the garden hose on full blast, that nozzle that the water's coming out is going to push that hose around in a circle. A handful of Generation 4 fighters like the Su-30 and MiG-29 incorporated thrust vectoring. But not the American F-15C, 